The topic is the first fundamental theorem of calculus. We will be covering some background information and we'll also explain how the first fundamental theorem of calculus works, and then we'll go over a few practice problems. So first, a little background. In the beginning of calculus, one of the first things we learned was how to solve for the derivative of a function, which is a slope at any given point on that function. Later, we learned how to solve for Riemann sums, which use rectangles to approximate the area under a curve with respect to the axis. By summing up the area of the rectangles, we got an approximate area of the area under a curve. Finally, we learned how to solve for antiderivatives, which are basically infinite Riemann sums with an infinite number of rectangles that are infinitesimally small. However, obviously this becomes boring because you have to solve for a Riemann sum that involves adding up infinite numbers of infinitely tiny rectangles which becomes complicated and tedious, and we really need a shortcut. And that's where the first fundamental theorem of calculus comes in. The first fundamental theorem of calculus, or FTC1, comes in two parts, FTC1 part 1 and FTC1 part 2. FTC1 part 1 is as follows. g of x is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. What this is saying is that if f is continuous on the interval from a to b, then we can define a function g of x such that g of x is the area under f of x with respect to the x-axis from a to b. If we were to define a function g of y is equal to the integral from a to b of f of y dy, that would be a similar result except the result would be the area with respect to the y-axis. From FTC 1 part 1, we can get FTC 1 part 2, which is as follows. The integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to capital F of a minus capital F of b, where capital F of x is equal to the antiderivative of f of x dx. Normally, when we take an antiderivative of a function, we have a constant term added at the end because there are an infinite number of those. However, in this case, we can ignore the constant term because we're going to be subtracting two antiderivatives of the same function and we can ignore the constant term because it will get subtracted out at the end and it won't affect the outcome. So now that we know and understand what the first fundamental theorem of calculus is, let's apply it with some practice problems. Problem one, find the area of the function f of x equals three x squared from six to eight. This is a simple problem because we already have everything we need. We can define the integral from at the endpoints of the function f of x. So we get the integral from 6 to 8 of 3x squared dx. The dx is because f of x is in terms of x. So we need to solve for the integral in terms of x. We first find the, an antiderivative of it without a constant term, and then we can evaluate at the endpoints. So the, uh, the antiderivative of 3x squared is equal to x cubed, and we evaluate at the endpoints, and then find the area in between by subtracting them. So we find 8 cubed minus 6 cubed, or 512 minus 216, to get our final answer of 296. Problem 2. If the velocity of a particle in meters per second at time t in seconds can be modeled with v of t is equal to 5t squared minus 7t plus 2, then what is the displacement of the particle from t equals 2 seconds to t equals 7 seconds? We know that displacement means the difference in the position between the two times, so we can use a simple antiderivative and then solve it at the endpoints of v of t. So that's what we do. We find the integral from 2 to 7 of 5t squared minus 7t plus 2, but this time it's dt because the function is in terms of time t. Next, we find the antiderivative of v of t, which is 5 over 3 t squared minus 7 over 2 t e squared, uh, 5 over 3 t cubed minus 7 over 2 t squared plus 2 t, and we evaluate between the endpoints. So we would get the quantity 1,715 over 3 minus 343 over 2 plus 14 minus the quantity 40 over 3 minus 28 over 2 plus 4. 
Evaluating each of the uh, parts gives us 2,485 over 6 minus 20 over 6 to get our final answer of 2,465 over 6 meters. Problem 3. Oil is leaking out of a tanker at a rate of V of T is equal to E to the T minus cosine of T, where T is in hours and V of T is gallons per hour. How much oil has spilled out after 20 minutes? Since we are ask, being asked how much oil has spilled out after 20 minutes and we're not giving them a starting time, we can assume that the starting time is at time zero. So we can assume that it's from integral will be from zero to 20 minutes. However, we will have to be careful here because V of T is in gallons per hour and T is given in hours. So we actually have to convert 20 minutes into hours. So we first know that 20 minutes is equal to one third of an hour. And then we evaluate the integral at those endpoints. We evaluate the integral of V of T dt or the integral from one, I mean zero to one third of E of T minus cosine of T dt. Then we can evaluate it. I mean, first we have to solve for the antiderivative and then we can evaluate it. So the antiderivative is e to the t minus sine of t, and we evaluate between 0 and 1 third. We solve and get the quantity e to the 1 third minus sine of 1 third minus the quantity of 1 minus 0, and then since this is calculus, we can round off to three decimal places, so we just plug this into our calculator, and we get our final answer that roughly 0 0.068 gallons has come out of the oil tanker so far. So, first we went over some background information, then we explained what the first fundamental theorem of calculus is, and how it works, and how we use it, and then finally, we went over a few practice problems to make sure we understand how the first fundamental theorem of calculus works. So that has been the first fundamental theorem of calculus, and I hope that was helpful.